think we should discuss today? We have a request to look at Best Dream. We've wanted to talk about that. What did you come up with on, on your research? actually found some new information that I haven't seen anywhere else in, in all the research that I've done. So it, it was an exciting dig into history, Watchtower history style. A couple of the subscribers actually connected with me on Zoom, and we looked at this together. Beth Sarim should be an interesting uh, subject because the Watchtower doesn't talk about it, the society itself. They, they really don't want it to be out there um and a lot of people haven't looked really deep into it at least as deep as we get into so uh let's let's begin the first question is how did rutherford end up at best Serum? and we've had a little bit of these rumblings and, and discussions of how he got out there if you look at our discussion on the first watchtower trumpet blast and you look at the films that they were making at the time the the Mena Film Company. One of those films was shot in Imperial Valley, California. And there's some very interesting stories about the films. So if you haven't seen that yet, go back. It's one of our earlier videos. Go back, take a look, take a click. Uh, it, it, there's some interesting things there that that are fascinating. Some stories that you, it makes you go, hmm. <laughs> but... but uh, uh, we also discussed a little bit of Rutherford's family matters as well. Some of the problems that he had with his brother and his own brother wanting to kill him. But there are some handwritten letters that I have in my possession where Rutherford talks about a threat against his life. And we discussed that in Judge Rutherford's death threat. That was an interesting discussion. And, and that's when he was out in California. He was living out there. Uh, we know that his wife... Uh, had some medical conditions. There's a letter where Rutherford is asking that he and his wife move to a to a warmer climate because of her health. And the same thing is suggested of Rutherford later in life after some interesting experiences. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. And this was by a doctor, correct? That's what the Watchtower literature says. So we'll, okay. well, we'll, we'll find out. Was and what that was all about. Now, at that time, we know that Rutherford is giving his lectures on militarism, why the nation's war. This is right during the First World War. In 1920, Rutherford and some of the Bible student friends take a trip out to Imperial Valley, California, and they make a little film about it. And they try to suggest that what is happening in Southern California is a fulfillment of prophecy. The desert's rejoicing and blossoming as a rose and, and, and things like that. Now, the funny part of that is the Bible specifically says those prophecies are for Israel. Um, it is ironic how it was reinterpreted to mean California, but uh, it's interesting how close Beth Sarim ended up being to that area. Now, you can see on the map here how I've mapped it out. It wasn't too far away. There's a doctor who lived there and suggested that Rutherford move into that area for health reasons and concerns. So I think they were scoping it out, trying to, trying to figure it out. And it's quite a beautiful area. I've been there several times. Also in 1915, both Rutherford and his wife are taking in the sights at the World's Fair. And we also discussed that in the, the Watchtower's first trumpet blast. And she is also seen in the film with Rutherford in Imperial Valley, California, where they're looking at some of the, the plants. This film about Imperial Valley, California, and some of the things that were stated about that area, you can see some of the examples of the slides uh, at the bottom. And so they were just showing how a uh, man was able to reclaim the desert. So were they claiming at any point that the uh, prophecies will be filled elsewhere other than Israel concerning this? I just think it's like the miracle wheat, for example, and that's another discussion for another time where they were looking in the news reports and other things like that, trying to see if some of the things they read in the Bible were actually 
happening somewhere on Earth. And they took this trip out in California because somebody suggested, hey, check out what's happening out here. And hey, by the way, you might want to live out here. We'll get into that a little bit soon here. If you haven't seen that discussion on the Mena Films and the Watchtower's first trumpet blast, there's also a very interesting discussion about a little piece of film that they're showing here where they're pushing the car. And we'll leave that for you if you haven't seen that. Very interesting. And the Rutherford son, Malcolm, took a trip out there in 1918. And if you read this story, it's almost unbelievable what happened to him. If what he's claiming is true, the poor guy almost died in the desert. The story sounds a little exaggerated to me. The viewer can read it and decide if it's a believable story or not. That's all. He did attribute his faith to his survival. So that that's at least something that's very, very commendable here in the story. An interesting note on uh, th this is uh, uh, people were speculating uh, the problems between Rutherford and his son Malcolm. Now, he actually wrote this article right here, correct? Yeah, and it was in favor of his father. Uh, and, and exactly, even the ending says, your most devoted son, Malcolm Rutherford. So, uh, apparently, their, their uh, relationship wasn't as strained as a lot of people want to believe. Or perhaps later on, and we'll get into that. At least at this point in time. And a little bit later on, we're going to get into that in this, this discussion. So, uh, Rutherford did take several trips out there in 1923, the second uh, trumpet blast. He gives his lecture on the sheep and the goats. And we have a four-part series on that, a four-part discussion. If you haven't seen that as well, go take a look. Uh, but that was yet another one of his trips out there. Very little is said in Watchtower literature about Beth Serene. There's absolutely nothing in the Jehovah's Witnesses in the Divine Purpose history book. And that was their first, the Watchtower Society's first history book. The 1975 yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses has a little bit. And it doesn't say very much, though. It says that Rutherford was under a doctor's treatment, and the doctor urged that he should stay in, in San Diego or, or in the Southern California because of his health. It also states that a contribution was taken to build a house for Rutherford's use and that Rutherford died there. But it says nothing at all about Rutherford's family either. So we're going to look at the documented evidence that we have and see what we can get out of this story. Another interesting side note in this is when we do a lot of comparison with uh the Divine Purpose and, and some of the other Watchtower books explaining this. For whatever reason, and it could be their uh, prediction of 1975, the Armageddon um, implication, uh, but that yearbook seems to come out with a lot of stuff that no other writings that they, they've published come out with. Any thoughts on that? I think they were trying to get the history recorded down. I know Franz was already old at that point, and some of the people lived through those experiences. So it was, I know there's several recordings of Franz giving some of the history, and I think they took those recordings and, and built some of these stories out of it. But of course, 1975, they also thought was going to be the end. So they thought if they could get the stories of these faithful men before they went into the great beyond, that uh, it would be encouraging for those who would live on into uh, the Jehovah's Witness kingdom. And it didn't quite happen as they expected. 1975 is another discussion. Another discussion. <laughs> but, but that yearbook did, did come out with a lot of uh, yeah. interesting stuff that is not published in anything else they've done. So it's yeah. a good thing we have that on record. So the Jehovah's Witnesses Proclaimers of God's Kingdom book has a short three-paragraph article 
and a footnote on this house of princes, on Beth Serene. And in it are eight, I guess, bullet points of things that they mentioned that we'll take a look at one by one, and we'll find the documentation for each of it. Number one is Rutherford had pneumonia after an unjust imprisonment. Number two, he was under treatment by a doctor in San Diego. Three, from 1929 on, he spent the winters at Beth Serene. Four, Beth Serene was purchased with contributions. Five, the deed said that the property was Rutherford's and the Watchtower's. Six, his book Salvation said that it was proof of the faithful men of old who would rule on the earth soon. Seven, it was too expensive to keep and it was sold. Eight, his wife was told to live in a warm climate for her health. So we're going to look at each of these eight points that are mentioned here, and I think that's all of them. I tried to summarize the article as, as uh, simply as I could. After Rutherford and the Watchtower Bunch went to prison, Here's the story. And, and we did a whole discussion on that in, in Judge Rutherford Judges the Sheep and the Goats and the details behind that and the convention that followed. In the St. Paul Enterprise, we get the information about Rutherford's sickness. And this is point number one. And if you look in the upper right corner, there's something not right here. 